Hi, it's Wednesday, the 12th of August, and uh, I'm continuing to work my way through the book of Acts, um, chapter 14 today. We're going to do 20 verses, and I'm going to sort of read, and I'll wonder out loud a little bit. Um, not to get you to agree with me, but to hopefully inspire you to wonder. Um, the book of Acts is a sequel to Luke's gospel, same author, uh, continuing the story of what happens after Jesus has ascended, is no longer there to tell the apostles what to do. And so the church begins to grow and spread, and we've moved in. We've had uh, martyrs, and we've had miraculous things. We've had teachings. Uh, we've had Paul, uh, well, once known as Saul, um, who was a persecutor of, uh, of, of Christians uh, as blasphemers, having them um, hunting them down, basically throwing them uh, in, into jail. Uh, we've had him convert, and now he's Paul, uh, and very involved in spreading the word to the Gentiles. We've recently heard um, in, in some of the synagogues about the God-fearers, so those who are drawn to the faith but are not traditionally Jewish, weren't raised Jewish, didn't, don't necessarily follow all of the traditions. They may not be the circumcised, um, but they they feel drawn to to the stories of uh, of the God of Abraham. So um, we're hearing about those folk, and then, um, well, what we're hearing now is is some difficulty between uh, the traditional um, Jews, and, and almost every time that the text says Jews, the Jews, uh, it's referring to Jewish authorities, those in charge of the synagogue or back in Jerusalem in charge of the temple, those who are leaders and have a vested interest. Uh, it's not the average person um, who happens to be Jewish. Um, so, it, in, unfortunately, I, I have to make that disclaimer because sometimes we hear these words and it can really lead to a kind of anti-Semitism. Um, well, not a kind of, it leads to a definite anti-Semitism uh, when people read the text and say, oh, look, the Jews were all against Paul. The Jews were all against uh, Jesus. Um, no, the, the religious authorities of the day who led people in the Jewish faith, they had difficulty uh, with Jesus, uh, with Paul, with the apostles who challenged their authority and their way of doing things. So it's important to notice that because we're going to get more of this. Um, we've also had this balance um, of signs or miracles and teachings as well. Um, and we see people coming to faith because of signs, but staying for the teachings or because of the teachings, but being amazed by the miracles. Um, and I just think it's interesting, the sort of the 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 the, the uh, not so much and or, but the bothness of it. Um, anyway, I just said bothness, so I really should move on. <laughs> so let me read to you uh, chapter fourteen, verses one through twenty. The same thing happened in Iconium, where Paul and Barnabas went into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks became believers. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So they remained for a long time, speaking boldly for the Lord, who testified to the word of his grace by granting signs and wonders to be done through them. But the residents of the city were divided, some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. And when an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat them and to stone them, the apostles learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of uh, uh, Laconia and to the surrounding country and there they continued proclaiming the good news in Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet had never walked for he had been crippled from birth he listened to Paul as he was speaking and Paul looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed said in a loud voice stand upright on your feet and the man sprang up and began to walk when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Iconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifice. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed into the crowd, saying, Friends, friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these worthless, worthless things to the living God 
who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations he allowed all the nations to follow their own ways, yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. But Jews came there from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowds. And then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposed that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. And the next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. So, the drama continues. As I mentioned, there's there's signs and wonders and there's teaching. So, um, Paul is preaching, but also miraculous things are, are happening and the people are drawn to this. But they're not all won over. They're, 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 they're split. Um, and, and we have this, this idea that there are people following them. Uh, in the same way that, that Paul, when he was known as Saul, um, went after uh, Christians as blasphemers. Well, there are people doing that now. Um, <laughs> It, it, it happens to uh, to Paul now, too, and um, I guess that's sort of karma. Um, but there are those who came um, from Antioch, where, where Paul and Barnabas just were, and they followed them uh, to discredit them, to shout them down. If, if they were on the internet, they would be trolling them um, to say they're, they're not speaking the truth. And, and they have great persuasive ability as well, because we know that the crowd was very excited by Paul and Barnabas, um, but the ones who came from Antioch um, and um, Iconium talked them out of it. In fact, got them so riled up that they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city. Here, though, I, you know, Luke says, supposing that he was dead. So this isn't a sense that they killed Paul and Paul is now um, resurrected or reanimated, brought back to life. No, no, they just, they, they, they treated him very badly. They stoned him, they beat him badly, so much so that they figured he was dead. But he wasn't. Um, so I, I find that interesting because in other stories, for instance, um, we heard um, some time ago uh, in, in, in the book of Acts um, when, uh, when Dorcas had died, right? And, and he went into her room and she came back to life. Now, he didn't say then was supposedly dead. Um, so for Luke, there are differences. So back then she was dead as far as Luke is concerned. Uh, and in this situation, Paul was not dead because he's made that distinction. Um, very often we hear some of those stories of people who were, who were dead um, and have seemed to have come back to life. You go, well, yeah, but they probably weren't really dead. They were probably just in really bad shape. Um, that might be true, but the author believed them to be dead. Um, because here's an instance where someone the crowd thought was dead wasn't, and Luke hasn't fallen into that trap. He says that very clearly. Um, so that's just something that I think about every now and again um, when I like to analyze my stories. I, for me, this passage pretty much follows the last couple. Um, they speak persuasively. People are moved. Um, some people aren't. The ones who aren't get upset uh, and try to take um, some kind of action against them. I'm not happy to have them disrupting uh, the status quo. Um, here, the violence has increased. Um, we're, we're stoning Paul now. Um, but I think the part that makes me wonder the most in this story... Um, so they perform this miracle, and this man who has been crippled since birth, he, he, he walks, um, and the crowd assume that these are basically the Greek gods brought to life. They assume that Barnabas is Zeus, and they assume that Paul is Hermes. And so they, they, they say, oh my God, the gods have come down to us in human form, and they, and they bring sacrifice. And... And no matter how hard Paul and Barnabas try, they can't seem to talk them out of it. Um, they rend their garments. They tear their clothes. We are mortal. We're just people. Don't do this. As if to say, you miss the point of this. If, if, if this faith can't be communicated person to person, 
then it's not the right faith. I mean, we're just people and we're telling you about a God who loves you, who, who, even when you don't believe, still rains on your crops and gives you good years, they say. Um, but, but here is the truth of all that. So there's no threat in this. There's no, if you don't believe in this God that we're talking about, then all your crops will die. Then you will have nothing but bad luck. Um, that's not what they're saying at all. There's no threat at all. What they're saying is, yes, your life is good, and that's because of this God. And, and, and so come to know this God even more. Not saying things will get even better, but saying that you will come to a deeper understanding of, of yourself, of your faith. I, I love that. This isn't a competition. This is an invitation to go deeper. This isn't saying that the faith you had before was garbage. It's saying the faith you had before was whatever it was. It was good or bad, up to you. Here's a chance to go deeper, to go better. Um, but the people insist on treating them like gods. And I wonder about that one sometimes. How often do we treat Jesus as God? And I, I know, I'm a Trinitarian, so I, I, I'm very comfortable. Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit are, are one, and we can go into that one day. Uh, but so, yes, yes, Jesus um, is, is, is one with God. Jesus is God. I, I get that. But the worshiping of Jesus, to me, becomes the problem. Um, and, and it doesn't mean we should um, dismiss Jesus or, or, or forget about Jesus. Absolutely not. But the invitation, I think, is to participate with Jesus. What these folk want to do with Barnabas and Paul is sacrifice ox and, and, uh, and bring garlands to them. And so we'll worship them, which will make them happy. And so they will give us good things. How often do we actually do that, do you think? with Jesus as Christians. How much do we we want to proclaim the name of Jesus? Uh, we, we will make sacrifices um, so that good things will come to us. How often do we do that as opposed to participate in the life of Jesus? Do the things that Jesus did because those things are good, because those things deepen our relationship our relationship with God, our relationship to all of creation, our relationships with each other. In a Trinitarian way, for me, Jesus is, is, is that participatory God, right? That Jesus is God participating in my human life. And so Jesus is that invitation for me to participate. As God participates in my life, I'm invi invited to participate, not to make a sacrifice, not to sort of sit back and go, oh, yes, you are great, but actually to participate in that life that's being shared with me, the one that I hear in the teachings, um, the ones that I recognize in the actions of Jesus. You know, this passage is, is pretty much the same as two passages before it. Uh, again, stories of, of, of miracles and teachings and how some people heard and some people didn't. And the ones who didn't like it fought against the ones who did. Uh, and so we know, yes, it was difficult um, to get the, to, to the spread of the early church. There were challenges and it was difficult. There were moments of great success and there were moments of great conflict. I got that. We've already been told that several times. Why is this story different? I think Luke tells us this story because the people tried to make them into gods. And I think Luke recognizes that that's a problem, but also that it's so easy to do. Um, we become so amazed, but we'd like to be amazed as we sit back in our chair so we can sew a garland and toss it on the fire and say that we are faithful. But what the apostles wanted from people is, 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 is to follow, is to participate in the life. What Jesus wants uh, of us is that we participate in the faith, not just sit back and announce that it's the best of all the faiths. We make it real by participating, not by simply noting its existence. I don't know, that's what's got me wondering today. 
it's got me wondering about the church uh, in general, but it's got me wondering personally too. Um, when, how, where am I participating in my faith? And when, how, and where am I simply making sacrifices, um, treating Jesus as, uh, as, as a God worthy of a statue, as opposed to a God who invites my participation in, in the holy and in the mundane, in the real world, where we can actually make a difference. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking about right now. And I'm going to leave it with you to do some thinking, to do some wondering, because it's in that wondering that we actually will discover the Word of God. Because I am convinced, without any doubt, that God is speaking to us. God is speaking to you speaking to you in the voices of family and friends and strangers, speaking to you in creation and speaking to you in scripture. We just have to engage with family, friends, creation, and scripture so that we can then hear that word. So engage. For now, let us pray. Loving God, Help us be participants in our faith and not just keen observers. Yes, let us be in awe of you and all of creation. Let us laud you with all of the best words, the best things we can find, but let us not have a faith that is free of action. Let us actually live those lessons that we've learned. Let us live differently because we are aware that you are present in our lives, in the world, really present, hands-on. Let us be different. Let us be transformed because of our faith. We ask this in Jesus' name, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So friends, I'll check in with you tomorrow. So until then, be well, love somebody, and know that you are absolutely not alone. God bless.